Hello, friends, and welcome to the Secrets of a Witch podcast with yours truly, Sabrina Scott, where we talk, or I guess I talk about spirituality, witchcraft, magic, life, love, healing, tarot, feminine energy, mediumship, and everything in between. And I hope you guys are doing good. It has been sunny yet crisp here in Toronto. We are fully in deep fall, I guess. And I'm still a little bit confused about what exactly I'm supposed to be wearing in this weather. So it's been a little bit of a an experiment, as I guess weirdly it is every year. So I hope y'all are doing good. And that, of course, is... Uh, was saying hello to you guys. So as y'all know, I am in the midst of opening up my Feminine Energy Without Bullshit course for enrollment. So I will talk a little bit about that today, but don't worry, that's not all I'm going to talk about. But I am talking about it because this course is really important to me and in it, I'm teaching a lot of the things that really transformed my life. So I do see tarot and magic as obviously incredibly important, incredibly foundational. I still engage in both of those things often. That being said, I do feel like for me, the feminine energy piece really was that missing component that really has allowed me to elevate to the next level of my growth and development. And I realize that might sound a bit like, I don't know, cheesy or weird or whatever, but it really is true. And one of the ways that I think about all of this is, I talk about this in, actually I did like almost two hour YouTube live today, so you can go listen to my whole spiel about that if you really feel called to do so. It's a pretty interesting conversation. We have some good live chat going with some folks asking me some questions. But one of the things I talked about was how with this whole project of feminine energy that I've been engaged in since, I guess, 2017, 2019, no, 2018, I guess, five years. I'm bad at math, you guys. Six years, something like that, 2017 to now. And what's been so interesting about it is I've really shifted my entire mode of being. So what do I mean by that? I've completely shifted how I think I've shifted how I react, how I respond to people. The things that used to bother me don't bother me anymore. And the things, some of the things I used to be cool with now do bother me. And so I create boundaries around those things. And it's been a fascinating journey. And so what I've kind of noticed with it all is that I've in some ways like become the altar of my practice. So when I'm teaching witchcraft and magic, I do talk a lot about the altar, the altar, the altar. Like that is kind of like the spirit HQ. Like that's where your ancestors will come hang out with you. That's where you give offerings. That's where you honor them. That's where you can put images and symbols and magic to summon certain things into your life. Whether that's money, love, uh, self-love. It can be really anything. A new job healing, family trauma, like it can be literally anything. We can do magic for pretty much anything. And so the altar is always what I teach anyway, the HQ of how all of that happens, right? I do believe everyone who is practicing magic should have an altar, obviously in whatever way resonates with you. Not everyone's altar has to be the same. I've got my own ideas about what makes a good altar, which I teach to my students. But anyway, What I'm noticing is that what I go to my altar for now is really different than what it used to be six years ago. The type of magic that I'm doing now is different than what it used to be six years ago. And I think a big reason for that is because of all of this feminine energy work that I have been able to do and really leaning into and embracing and sitting on my hands and biting my tongue and really leaning into the discomfort that these transformations necessitate, basically. And so it's been really interesting. It's a little bit hard to explain, which is why it's like a two hour long uh, YouTube conversation today with myself and the lovely folks in the chat. I'm so thankful for the folks that hung out live. 
was it really does change your whole, your whole mode of being. And I've been really blessed to be working with some amazing clients over the past little while, one-on-one doing some work on feminine energy. And it's been honestly awesome and so much fun. And one of the things I've really noticed with a lot of that is so many women and AFAB folks or natal females or whatever way you want to describe Often we have this deep intuition, this deep knowing that bubbles up in our body. And so many of us push that down. We neglect it. We ignore it. We poo-poo it. We push it under the rug. We ignore our own feelings. We ignore our own, our own desires, our own impulses, our own, like, all of this stuff that we're feeling and that f- those could be feelings around things that we desire. It can also be th- like feelings around uh, boundaries that we would like to have, but that we are too afraid to communicate. And that's one of the things I talked about a lot in the, the YouTube live today, about how a lot of the time women in particular are afraid to have boundaries. We're afraid if we have boundaries then we're going to be abandoned. We're going to be rejected. We're going to end up alone. And so what ends up happening is we have no boundaries. And yeah, we might have a person we might have a man if we're a straight person or if we're dating men at the time. We might have that person, but we're abandoning ourselves in order to get that person. And so I want to be clear. My feminine energy course is not a dating course. Like there's a lot of sections on specifically connecting with feminine divinities, female deities. That's important. And so it's not a course about dating. That being said, I do find when we talk about feminine energy and masculine energy, some of the most clear examples of how does that energy move, I've observed in that dating space. So sometimes I'll use that as examples in my own life. Sometimes I'll use that as examples because to be honest, I love being in my masculine energy when I'm working. That's part of the point. And yet, I love having that in, that balance within myself to learn how to be in that feminine energy and not have to be in the masculine energy all the fucking time, which is how I used to be. And if you guys creep the images on my feminine energy without bullshit course website page thing, you'll see an aura picture of me from 2018 and an aura picture of me from this year. And the aura in both of them is red. So that's that root chakra, grounded, stable, that like physical energy type of piece. And you'll notice that in 2018, the aura photo is almost entirely black. It's so dark. So yeah, I had an aura. And yeah, it was like a big aura, but it was dim. Like, I'm d- like to describe the image, it was like pretty much the picture is me and then it's all black. And then there's this really skinny, like red rainbow arching over my head. And it's so thin. And so it makes sense. If I think back to my life at that point, I'm sure a lot of people maybe seeing me from the outside would have been like, oh, Sabrina, powerhouse, so awesome, confident, blah, blah, blah. And like, yeah, that might be true. I was doing a lot of stuff. I was achieving a lot. Um, I guess I was very present in my work, like doing conferences. I was all over the place. I was traveling. I was presenting here. I was presenting there. I was teaching at the university. I was like doing so much crazy shit. I was a lot. (laughs) And yet in my romantic life in particular, it was draining all of my life force that year. I remember 2017 and 2018. It was draining my vitality. And I was so in my masculine energy, I didn't even know how to relate to feminine energy. I didn't know how to, like obviously I had intuition, obviously, but in many cases, in some parts of life, I was overwhelmed by that anxiety that I didn't always act on my intuition. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. In some areas of life, it was a lot easier to. For work as a masculine energy sphere for me, that was always easy. In love life, no, (laughs) I was masculine energy everywhere. And it's so interesting because I, one of the things I talked about on the YouTube live today, and I talked about it more in depth on the live, and I'll talk about this a lot more in depth in the course, feminine energy, a lot of like when women have a hard time accessing it, 
And when we're in our masculine energy almost all the time, it's often because we've been traumatized, we've been hurt, we've been abandoned. And so we don't feel comfortable and safe to lean back and trust that other people are going to step up or take care of us or everything is going to be okay without us micromanaging it. Right? And so when we grow up in a space that is safe and happy and healthy, it's a lot easier for people who grew up in that situation to relax in their feminine energy, to be able to have that natural balance of go-getter masculine energy and also a soft, receptive pleasure of receiving feminine energy. It's easier for folks to balance that. It's easier for women to balance that when you grow up in a peaceful situation. But when you grow up or grow into young adulthood and have trauma and unsafety and violence and whatever happened to you, we have the, this internal masculine energy that jumps up to protect us, to keep us safe. So it's a survival mechanism, and that's hugely important. And we can give our masculine energy part of ourselves a hug, a high five, thank you so much for protecting me, and yet... That feminine energy, when we don't tap into it, when we don't step into it, and we don't expand into it, it's so easy to hold ourselves back. From experiencing life in a more beautiful way, in a more expanded way, like now that I'm over here in the feminine energy zone in more areas of life, I still have the masculine energy. I'm not demonizing it. I think we all have both. But now that I'm able to access that feminine energy and step into it a lot of the time as my default space, life has become a lot more colorful and joyful and comfortable. And I notice the like warning bells of my old trauma dissipate. And so life feels very peaceful over here. And my relationship to my magic has become a lot deeper. My relationship to energy work and witchcraft has become deeper. I've been able to connect with feminine energy ancestors. So like my grandmothers on both sides are in spirit. It's a lot easier to connect with them now than it was back when I was having a hard time connecting with feminine energy. I can now connect with feminine saints. Now the two saints I work with are female. Back when I was in my masculine energy, I was mostly working with more male divinities. And I'm not saying that we need to jump from one to the other. But I'm saying that now I'm able to connect with both in a way that I wasn't before. And so maybe your love life, your friendships, all of that is totally fine. No problem. Maybe you don't feel like you are a... Uh, doormat or overgiving or over understanding or maybe you don't feel guilt when people give to you maybe 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 if you have issues connecting with feminine energy divinities or spirits this work can still benefit you honestly I feel like it's beneficial for pretty much everybody like even if there's any men who want to take my course like by all means like hell yeah I'm about it if you're non-binary I don't care Come along for the ride. As I think learning about the differences in these different energies, the healthy aspects of feminine energy, the unhealthy, wounded aspects of it, and then the same for masculine energy, I think it's just really useful to think about. It's really useful to observe, to be able to lean into it, to think about it, to step back in our own life, observe and be like, okay, how how is my energy? What energy can I move into? And what do I have a really hard time to move into? And why? What energy do I want to be in? I hear from a lot of women who are overgiving in their marriages, let's say to men, and the men just fucking do nothing. And the women are exhausted by basically being a parent, a lover, a mother, like a partner, a wife, all of these things. And they're in this hyper-masculine space where they can never lean back. And so I think part of the interesting thing with the feminine energy, when we actually step into it, it's like, and I talked about this on YouTube today, some chips will fall. 
And I think one of the things keeping a lot of women from embracing feminine energy is like some of those things in your life will leave. The, everything will be tested. It's like your relationships will be tested. Sometimes even the friendships will be tested. Sometimes the family relationships will be tested. But what I love about feminine energy is it's all about our authenticity. It's about honoring our body, honoring our feelings, and creating the space for other people to also honor their own feelings. It creates a space for open communication. It creates a space for authentic living. It creates a space for honoring our own limits, honoring our own boundaries, and honoring what the vision that we want is for our lives and deciding that we don't have to settle for less than what we want. It is possible to lead a life where we respect our own boundaries and we live authentically. I think it's true. <laughs> so, okay, my friends, I've done so much talking today. So I'm going to leave, leave that there. My voice needs a rest. And I hope I have given you guys some food for thought, some stuff to think about, no matter what your gender expression is, no matter your natal sex, however you were born, whatever energy you resonate with. I hope that this has been interesting. And I do hope you check out my uh, website for my course, sabrinamscott.com slash F-E-W-O-B-S. The link will also be in the description of this podcast episode. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions, if you're trying to figure out if it's a fit for you. And honestly, I would just love to hear from you if you're listening to this and you're like, what the fuck, from energy? I don't understand. Like, please, by all means, send me an email. Like, tell me about your problems. I want to hear about it. What's going on for you? What are your struggles? What do you want to be different about your life That's what I want to know. So feel free to reach out, CEO at SabrinaMScott.com. Send me a message on Instagram, SabrinaMScott on Instagram. And of course, my YouTube, you can watch all the stuff over there, youtube.com slash SabrinaScott. And that's all for now. Also, I guess happy Thanksgiving early to everyone who's celebrating that next, next week. I'm aware that this is also going to be a big family time for a lot of people. And so... This is actually a great time as well to be thinking about feminine energy and masculine energy because we do learn a lot about that in the family dynamics, right? And as a lot of Americans, especially, I know most of y'all are American, are going to be moving into family stuff over the next week or so. And so it's an opportunity to just step back and notice the gender dynamics and the energy dynamics and who is giving, who is doing, who is relaxing, you know, who is receiving and who is, who is, who is. It's important and interesting to think about, observe Tell me what you notice. Take notes. I'm curious to hear all about it. I think you guys know how you can get in touch with me. I can't wait to hear from y'all. Hopefully this has been useful and I hope to see you in my course. Much love, friends. Bye.